Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. In this video I have a geometric topic that relates to automotive wheels and hubs, bicycle chain rings, hence my cycling shirt, and pipe flanges. If you're fabricating pipe flanges, bolts and bolt hole locations are typically laid out on a circle, pipes are sometimes terminated in a flange, and two pipes by their flanges can be bolted together when the bolt holes match on two opposing flanges. Usually there's a compressible uh, seal between the two pipes and the compression is provided by the clamping force of the bolts that are torqued to specifications. So whether you are fabricating pipe flanges or finding the right part that fits your machine, either automotive or bicycle, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate a critical number by which parts can be located. This critical number is your bolt circle diameter and in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate it using a single measurement. This single measurement is going to be the bolt hole center to bolt hole center measurement. In other words, if this is the side length of a regular polygon, whether this polygon has three bolt holes, four, five, six, sixteen, or a hundred bolt holes, how do you calculate the circle on which these bolt holes are located given one measurement, one side length of this polygon? I hope this makes sense. Measurement will be taken very simply with a digital for the caliper, like so. And you can do this also on an automotive hub when you have the either on a hub or on the wheel that matches it or if you have a vehicle that doesn't have the wheels and you want aftermarket wheels that match it so you can measure sometimes the, just the holes or measure the studs the lug nuts or the bolts that stick out from the hub or pipe flange whatever the case might be I hope this makes sense so that's the video's layout at the end of the video because machine parts are standardized to a great degree I'm going to show you how some bicycle five bolt mounting patterns and bolt circle diameters for these bolt circle diameters what the side length is supposed to be instead of taking a measurement I'm doing it backwards given these bolt circle diameters on the packaging what is a five sided polygon a pentagon's side length or hole to hole measurement or bolt to bolt measurement so that's at the end of the video first things first terminology the words bolt circle is highlighted red because the bolt circle I'm talking about or pitch circle as it is known in automotive industry this pitch circle is the red circle the holes are marked with these broken lines here or dashed lines here and these can be either holes in the wheel or bolts in the hub or studs in a pipe flange whichever the case so they can be viewed either as hole or as bolt it doesn't really matter but their centers can be connected forming a regular polygon either four-sided five-sided six-sided whatever polygons don't have diagonal uh, sorry diameters but the circle does the red circle does have a diameter the word diameter is blue there it's really important that the diameter must go through the center of this red circle so the diameter is not really going from corner to corner just because it looks good on paper no this diameter this diameter has to go through the center of the circle and sometimes it just happens to bisect or come through one side exactly in the middle of a polygon it's, yeah, especially when you have uh, three five seven nine bolts odd number of bolts then you will find the diagonal oh, sorry the diameter going through the going through the center and cutting one side in half if you have an even sided polygon such as four eight then you can go from corner to corner, you can go along a diagonal. A diagonal will also be your diameter, but not always. Different words. So that's terminology. I hope this layout makes sense with a five-sided polygon, a pentagon. 
what I'm doing here with the pentagon is I'm slicing and dicing. If I use the center of the circle, the five-sided polygon, the pentagon, falls apart into five triangles. These triangles are congruent, meaning identical in size and shape. And these congruent triangles, because in the middle, at 360 degrees that make a circle here, and I have five of these triangles, it's 72 degrees of turn here at the center. Okay, so the central angle is 72 degrees for each triangle. And that also means that these other angles there, so if this is central angle, that would be the angle along the base. This would be the base of a polygon or a pentagon. In this case, those are 54 degrees each because 180 degrees in a triangle are at, at the or are the internal sum of the internal angles of a triangle. So 72 degree central angle is going to be featured this way on the next one. Right here where the diameter cuts one side in half, this is where you take a measurement for example. It could be between any two bolt holes. So how do I do this with this caliper? Yeah, somewhere I can't get it close enough to the camera. Oh, I can. There. You take a measurement between that bolt hole and that bolt hole with this vernier caliper. And I'm working with half the measurement here. Just with this right angle triangle here. What happened to the 72 degree central angle? Now in this, it got cut in half. Because this, the base, got cut in half by this diameter. So that central angle is 36 degrees on this triangle, right angle triangle, and 36 degrees on this right angle triangle. I'm going to work with this triangle that has 36 degrees, that's a 90 degree angle there, 36, 90, 54 triangle. That 54 is the same in every corner. 54 plus 36 plus 90 still adds up to be 180. What's below here, if I scroll down a little bit, is you can use sine cosine tangent to calculate the length of the hypotenuse. The length of the hypotenuse is this broken blue line here. The green line here is the opposite side, opposite the central angle of 36. So sine, the function, is relating opposite to hypotenuse. Okay, so katoa, so opposite and hypotenuse. Now this hypotenuse in this right angle triangle just happens to be the radius of the circle. From here to here is not the radius, from here to here is the radius. And this happens to be the same here, because it goes from the center to the circumference, the red line. So a line that goes from circumference, to, from origin of the circle to circumference, that's radius. So that dashed uh, blue line is a radius. You can calculate radius using the sine function. Sine 36 equals half your measurement, that's what half m is, half your measurement divided by the radius. That's how it looks like. Now if you rearrange the components, radius equals half your measurement divided by sine 36. Or if you want to calculate diameter, which is twice as long as radius, then you have to double something on the other side of the equation as well. Instead of half your measurement, just use full measurement and the same 36 degree angle. How this looks like is this. I have here this chain ring and I'm going to measure in millimeters, but it doesn't matter, you can measure it in inches, from center to center. Now how do you measure from center to center? Let me show you, because you can't hook it on a bolt or anything. You have to hook the jaws of the caliper on the edge of one bolt hole but if you do it this way it's not going to work too well because you're going from left side of one hole to the right side of the other no you have to go from center to center and center to center needs a little bit of eyeballing but not a whole lot let me just adjust it and hold it in front of the camera so you can see it you can see the spurs of the caliper here that now we go approximately Okay, I'll just fix one side down and move the other. They're approximately center to center. It's not close enough. You can do it better if you move from center to center, 
to consistently left side to left side or to right side to right side like this so what I'm doing is I'm gonna do it this way so that this spur on the caliper or that jaw on the caliper is against the bolt hole solidly and only one side needs to be eyeballed it does need a little bit of eyeballing and if I come closer to the camera that's how this looks like so this one is engaged against the side of the circle and this one is kind of there eyeballed so in this case my measurement is 65.22 millimeters I can make it a little tighter here uh, 65.06 how about that we can work with that that measurement is approximate but is going to be good enough for our purposes so if I enter my full measurement which is 65.06 that was my latest version and divided by sine 36 your calculator might work differently equals 110.68 millimeter pitch circle diameter or bolt circle diameter so the calculation itself is fairly fast now nobody makes a 110.68 pitch circle but they do make a 110 millimeter pitch circle or bolt circle so obviously it's a, me it's a measurement error due to eyeballing these chain rings have been made to fit a 110 BCD bolt circle diameter pattern and crank arm I hope this makes sense that due to the rounding in the eyeballing of the measurement this 65 point whatever it was it moved away the 65.06 is estimated I will show you what the actual number should be when it's not eyeballed I'm calculating starting with 110 and calculating backwards I'll show you on the last slide but before I move to the last slide this relates to five bolt patterns but the same math can be done with four bolt or three bolt patterns this is how five mounting bolts for three the diameter can be calculated if you let me just pull you a little sideways right there so diameter can be calculated if you take your measurement divided by sine 36 which is half your central angle there because the 360 degrees were divided into five parts first and then half of that ten parts 36 degree angle is your key angle that's half your central angle that you're working with if you have four you're working with 45 degrees and you can use diagonal as diameter but in a because it has even number of corners and here your formula is your measurement gets divided by the sine of 60 to calculate your pitch circle diameter if you have six seven eight nine whatever more bolts then you find that the pitch circle or bolt circle diameter by taking your measurement dividing it by the sine of half your central angle your central angle depends on how many corners you have if you have 10 corners your central angle is 360 divided by 10 take half of that so 360 divided by 20 for 10 bolts so my last slide here shows you this in cycling if you have five bolts mounting your chain rings if you take a measurement the, your measurement is sorry you me don't take a measurement uh, if you have a bolt circle it's the other way around if you have a bolt circle diameter of these numbers 64 is a standardized manufacturing manufacturer size 74 82 86 nobody makes an 84 and a half uh, BCD chain ring to my knowledge so these sizes have been standardized and in this case I'm using this backwards that's why it's not a division here with the sign 36 it's a multiplication we're going backwards so your bolt to bolt measurements should be these numbers here that are listed there and for the 110 millimeter chain ring the measurement that I should have come up with without eyeballing 
instead of 65.06 uh, that I was kind of close, it should be mathematically 64.65. Now I have two digits everywhere, there's a little bit of rounding, but you only get two decimal places out of a vernier caliper digital one, or, or maybe a non-digital either. So two decimal places is plenty because you can see 64 and 76 are not quite close enough. You can probably even put a ruler on some of those bolt hole locations. Just make sure you go from center to center or left edge to left edge or right edge to right edge consistently where you take your measurement. So 61 is not really kind of close to 64 and a half. I'm just rounding it a little bit. You know, if you have good eyes and the workpiece is flat enough to measure and is well lit enough to measure, so the, those, these numbers are the measurements that you should be seeing given these bolt circle diameters or pit circle diameters. I hope that makes sense. That's basically what I wanted to show you. The measurement and, and the bolt circle diameter can be combined like this. And that bolt circle diameter is needed for getting the correct parts that fit your machine. Or you need to start you need to start your layout work having this circle laid out first, and then along its circumference you can lay out your four, fifteen, whatever as many number of holes as you need for mounting flanges together. Thank you very much for watching.